Kaorian, um, you yeah. have recently been part of the Snow Leopard Trust and Snow Leopard Conservation Foundation's team that found the den site of wild Snow Leopard Dagina in Mongolia. Uh, can you explain why it's important to locate Snow Leopard den sites and examine the cups in the dens? Right. Um, yeah, so we know very little about Snow Leopard uh, ecology. And uh, one of the key aspects to any species, understanding a species, um, is reproduction. And uh, currently we have, that's one of the areas where we know basically nothing really. And so to understand how many cubs they get, how often they get cubs, um, how many of the cubs that survive and at what age they disperse and find their own home ranges. Um, you need a long-term study, especially for species like snow leopards who, who live for quite many years and, and reproduce slowly. And so by combining different methodologies like collaring, den visits, and uh, camera trapping, we can get the answers that we need to understand the species and conserve them for the future. So how do you go about it? How do you find a snow leopard den in the wild? Right. So, um, uh, so our females, we know that they give birth in between May, or I should say April, May, June, or maybe July. So if any of the females go missing <laughs> at this time, as in we just don't get any locations from them, that these are collared females. Right? They're, they're right, GPS right. trackers. Sorry. So, so these are, are females with GPS collars. So if they just disappear, it means that they're hiding somewhere with a rock over their head, um, such as in a cave. And then the, the GPS can't get through, like the signals can't get through to the collar. Uh, and they won't, they could of course stay in a den or a cave for a short while if it's bad weather, but if they're in that cave for more than say three, four days, it means that they are denning. So when this happens, uh, we go to the area and we start listening with radio from far away first, uh, trying to determine roughly where the female is. And then to begin with, we'll have a pretty big area. It might be maybe a kilometer times or a square kilometer. And then we we listen from vantage points and we try to figure out where, where she is and we will slowly decrease the area. And when we have it narrowed down to maybe 100 times 100 meters, we know that somewhere in there she should be. Uh, then we just wait for the female to go out hunting. Uh, and we do that when the cubs are old enough, so they should be at least two weeks old. Um, it usually takes us <laughs> at least two weeks to figure out where the den is anyways. So it works pretty well. Uh, and then when the female is out, we sneak in really fast uh, and we locate the den, we take the cubs, we put them in a bag, uh, a breathable mesh bag, so it's a little bit dark and then they keep calm. And then we take them out one at a time and we weigh them, we put in a microchip or a pit tag uh, we sex them and we collect some hairs for DNA samples and then we put them back. So the whole um, whole procedure takes maybe yeah, between 5 and 15 minutes depending on how many cubs. Um, so that's basically it. So what, what happens after? There have been people you know, who have been afraid that maybe the mother would abandon the cubs or, or at least move to the den site. What usually happens when you're done with the den visit? When the offspring is maybe just a few days old, the mother has already created this bond. And so there is no way they would leave their offspring. When they come back there, yes, they might smell that there's been humans there, but their cubs are still there. I mean, they're fine, nothing happened to them. And so the only thing that the mother might do is decide that this area is not safe anymore. And so she changes then location. And that's not a disaster that happens now and then in nature. Um, well, most likely she won't even do that um, because yes, there's been people here, but 
the camps are still there. So obviously this location is really safe because they didn't find the cubs. So it's hard to know exactly how they reason, but um, if anything, they will change them inside. And, and that's really not a, it's not a big thing. So in this case, Dagina didn't even change the end location and she appears to have stayed in that den. Right, right. So, so what happens the day after we do the visit, we go back and we and we listen with the radio again to make sure that the female is is back. And um, she was back the day after and taking care of her cubs. Um, and we also keep checking uh, our GPS locations to see that um, she remains in the same area. And uh, there is no indication that she has shifted the end site. Uh, if she did, she moved a very short distance, which is highly unlikely. So uh, we're sure. I mean, we wouldn't go in again to check, um, but there are, I am sure that she's in the same den site. And I am 100% sure that she did not abandon her cubs. 